Hi, Elaine here. In this video, you'll learn about pre-flight in Affinity Publisher and hang around until the end for a sneaky extra way that you can use it too. Affinity Publisher's pre-flight check feature is used to ensure that your document exports or prints as intended. It does that by highlighting any issues or potential issues that could negatively impact your output. A huge range of elements are monitored via pre-flight, so you are pretty much covered in every regard. And the pre-flight check is a background process with three options for when it actually runs. On demand, immediately prior to output, or live and on a continual basis. Having said that, the precise behaviour that you will encounter depends on the file type you're working on. In Affinity Publisher files, by default, pre-flight checking will be set to live. But if you're editing a PDF, an Affinity Designer file, or an Affinity Photo file, then by default, the pre-flight checking will be set to never. This default behaviour can be adjusted manually using the pre-flight panel settings. No matter what the file type, though, it's a simple matter of setting the pre-flight mode to your personal preference. And that's as easy as choosing your preferred option in the pre-flight panel. So never export or live. As the pre-flight system finds issues, the pre-flight page indicator in the status bar changes to warn of what it considers to be potential problems. In version two of Affinity Publisher, the indication icon is a page. But no, you are not going crazy if you thought it was something else, because in version one, this used to be a bell rather than a page. Grey indicates that pre-flight is not enabled. Green means pre-flight is active and no issues have been found. Amber, pre-flight is active and although issues have been found, they won't affect the export. Red, the pre-flight is active and errors that will impact the export have been identified. Hovering over the icon when it's red or amber shows the number of errors. And as you can see, this file's got big problems. Clicking the icon opens the pre-flight panel or it focuses the pre-flight panel if it's already open. As I mentioned, the default pre-flight profile checks a huge range of options for potential issues. Once you have this list open, double clicking an item listed in the pre-flight panel takes you to the location in the file where the issue can be found. This is so you can deal with it manually. Even quicker though, with certain entries, a fix button appears next to the issue, allowing you to correct the issue without further interaction. I find I use this a lot when a table of contents needs to be updated before my final output. Few points to note. Embedded or linked documents are checked, but you are not able to select inside those sub documents to investigate the problems identified. According to Affinity, this is by design. Now, if it's enabled, pre-flight will be rerun prior to printing and exporting the file. If pre-flight lists any errors, a dialog box offers to stop the export and provide the opportunity to view the pre-flight panel and the errors found. You won't see such a dialog box if you have no errors, but you have warnings. But all of that is only the default behaviour, and you can change all of it by using pre-flight profiles. So, what are pre-flight profiles? They are customised sets of rules that check your document for potential output errors before you output the file. But they will only address the errors that you configure them for. So, why are pre-flight profiles useful? Simple answer to that, so you're not repeatedly dealing with errors that aren't really errors. So, for example, your copy has been signed off and it's riddled with technical terms specific to the precise content and you don't want to have to deal with words reported as spelling mistakes. So, you can customise your pre-flight profile to exclude checking for spelling mistakes. So, let's create a custom pre-flight profile. Initially, the pre-flight panel uses a default set of checks. But, as I've said, you're not stuck with those defaults, though. Editing the defaults will create a custom pre-flight profile and you'll be able to create as many additional custom pre-flight profiles as you need. And here's how. In the pre-flight panel, hit the burger menu and select Edit Profile. 
If the default profile is active, it will create a new custom profile as soon as I make any changes. If it's set to any other profile, that profile is opened for editing. So the custom change I need to make here is to do with the spelling. On the left hand side, we have a long list of all of the elements checked in preflight. So all I need to do is scroll down and find spelling. Initially, in the default settings, a spelling mistake or what Affinity Publisher considers to be a spelling mistake is marked as a warning. I want to actually disable that entirely. I don't want to see any of these spelling mistakes at all. So click disabled, click close. And I now have created a custom profile, which in the profile drop down is showing us custom. More importantly, in the list below, you can now see that none of the spelling mistakes are showing. The last thing I need to do to be able to save this and reuse it in the future is to give it a custom name. So back to the menu and create preset. And I'm going to give this preset a name of no spelling check. That is now listed in the profile drop down and I can switch between that preflight profile and my default, which does check for the spelling errors. Even more useful, once a custom preflight profile exists, you are able to export them and import them into other Affinity Publisher installations. So maybe transfer your custom profiles from your desktop to your laptop. Couldn't be easier. Go back to the burger menu and manage presets. Select the preset you want to export and choose the export user presets button. I will put mine on the desktop and I will call this no spelling check. That is now exported. To prove that point, from within here, with it selected, I will delete the no spelling check. It needs me to confirm that. So I'm going to confirm by hitting delete preset and close. You can see it's set back to custom. So it does still exist, but it doesn't have a name anymore. If I go back to default, though, you can see all of the spelling mistakes. And when I go back to custom, the spelling mistakes are still there because my custom preflight profile has been deleted. But we know it's on the desktop. So I go back into manage presets and this time export isn't an option because I don't have any custom presets at all. Hit the import presets button though and my affinity preflight preset file is on my desktop. Select that and select import and that will bring it back in. So this is the one it has imported called no spelling check and close that window. Go back to the preflight panel and here is my no spelling check. Enable it and the spelling mistakes disappear. If you're not interested in user comments and creating a note to self system, that's it. Hopefully I'll see you next time. If you are interested, then here we go. So knowing all of that, here's how you can create a note to self system by customizing those tools and options. But what's a notes to self system and why is having one so useful? Well, if you've ever used Adobe Photoshop, you may be aware that it has a note system. If not, this is what it looks like. So there's a dedicated notes panel and a dedicated notes tool. You will find the notes tool underneath the eyedropper. So enable the note tool. Your cursor changes. You can now add a note anywhere in this file. So click, it adds an icon. It also activates the text area in the notes panel and you can add a note, a new note. You can then click anywhere else. So let's say down there where that twig is and make a note to remove the twig. And what else have we got? Let's remove some of these flowers here. So a note to self, remove flowers. Once you've added notes, you're able to navigate them using the buttons in the notes panel. So at the bottom, you can go backwards, you can go forwards. As you navigate through them, one of the icons will light up. In this case, it's the second one. It shows a pencil and some lines to indicate it's the active note. And you can see the note in the notes panel. When you've dealt with the issues, you can click the delete button 
and confirm that you do actually want to delete these notes. And that is the note system in Photoshop that I was very used to using. Sadly, in Affinity Publisher, we have none of these dedicated notes tools, but we can take some existing features and use them together to create something workable. So let's take a look at the user comments feature within Affinity Publisher. What are user comments? User-defined text notes or comments attached to any element of the current design. Contrast that with Photoshop, where the notes weren't attached to any specific design element. Why are user comments useful? Well, here's a few examples. To check the content is present. To check all the imagery is licensed. To confirm that all copy is signed off. To remind you to change the visibility of elements. And to confirm that the content release is in place. Just a few ideas. So how do you add a user comment? Select a design element, right click, move down to pre-flight comment and choose set. That opens a dedicated dialog box and you add your comment in here. So in this case, something like check the date would make sense. Click OK. That comment is now added. How do you access those comments? Exactly the same way as you created it. So select the object, right click, move down to pre-flight comment and select set. What that does is let you edit the comment, but it also lets you view the comment. And OK when you're done. The second way to view the comment is to use the pre-flight panel. Moving across to that, you can see now we've added some text. We have an entry. It's showing as an error. And it's saying check the date, that's the text that we added, and there is a fix button next to it. So that's a second way to see the comment. When it comes to removing a comment, right click on the design element, move down to pre-flight comment, and this time select clear. The comment is now removed. It's disappeared from the actual design element and it's also been removed from the pre-flight panel. So back to creating our own notes system. Affinity Publisher doesn't have a dedicated notes tool, but as you now know, you are able to add user comments to any element within your design just by right clicking and selecting pre flight comment set. So I'll add back the check the date instruction. And now we have a comment. Repeat that as necessary. The trick is making it more useful and more easily accessible. So going back to the burger menu, and clicking the option to edit the profile. So this brings up the edit pre-flight profile dialog with a whole range of options in it. Now, the only one that I want this new profile to check for is user comments. So starting at the top with index, I'm going to disable all of the warnings for everything else. So just working through them and disabling them. As I do that, you'll see the list of warnings and errors shrink. Until in the end, we should only have the user comments left. So it doesn't take that long. Some of them are already disabled by default. So you could enable them if you wanted to check for those things. But I'm just quickly going through and disabling everything apart from one option. So I'm skipping the user comments at the moment. I'm disabling absolutely everything else. And finally, going back to the user comment. Now, the reason I've gone back to this is there are three warning levels. There's disabled, warning and error. By default, a user comment is marked as an error. I would prefer that to be marked as a warning, particularly in this custom view. So I'm just going to click warning and that will change it. So the icon becomes a warning triangle rather than an error. It would be fantastic if we could use our own icons for this, but that's not supported at the moment. So at this stage, I'm going to close the edit pre-flight profile and what I'm left with is exactly what I want. But at the moment, it's just set to custom. It doesn't actually have a name. So what I need to do is go back and create a preset based on the current settings. So this custom view. So create preset. This is my notes preset and OK. Now I've saved that, I can switch between profiles. 
So I have my default profile, which will show me the default. I've got my no spelling check that we created earlier in the video. And finally, I have my notes view. And just as we did before, what I would do with this notes view is then export it. And that way I can import it into other installations of Affinity Publisher. And that is how I created a notes to self feature in Affinity Publisher. Let's recap. Preflight is turned on by default when you're working with native Affinity Publisher files. Preflight is turned off by default when you're editing other file types. You're able to configure Preflight to check or conversely not to check for specific issues by editing the settings. If you want to reuse specific settings, you're able to create custom Preflight profiles that can be exported and imported into other Affinity Publisher installations. And our bonus this time was using those features to replicate as far as possible the notes tool system in Adobe Photoshop and to create a notes to self system in Affinity Publisher. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <music>